Hi, I'm Mike Schaefer. Welcome to the new Action Art video. The new Action Art is a spontaneous process that lets you be creative with the canvas and lets you create great abstract art. It's a process that allows for you to not really make mistakes. It flows and you work with different types of paint and acrylic inks and rubbing alcohol and a whole slew of things and they become your partners and you make beautiful art together. All right, so let's get started. Let me introduce the members of your team. First of all, a spray bottle with water. Second, a nice large paintbrush. Third, just regular acrylic paint. Fourth, a small palette that you make with uh, basically wax paper and a wood block. And then our two big players, our stars, rubbing alcohol in a nice little bottle with a dropper. And our number one star, Dowler Rowney Acrylic Inks. Beautiful colors, cons great consistency, really makes your art spectacular. So let's get started. First thing we do is we spray the canvas nice and evenly with a light spray. You want to make sure you have a good liquid density to what you're doing. Secondly, as I mentioned, we have acrylic paint. And you need to make a decision as you get started whether you're not a darker background or a lighter background. Today I'm going to be working with a darker background and then using brighter colors to make the composition. So what we do is we take in this case a nice dark purple and we put it a little squirt on your on your temporary palette and then we take this nice uh, light bluish aqua green and we create some paint on the palette there. So now what we do is we start with the dark purple and make a nice light wash on the canvas, spreading out the paint evenly and really creating a nice interesting background to your piece. And as you know in watercolor, the paint does a nice effect as it spreads out. So that's what I'm attempting to do is make a nice effect as it spreads out. Okay, so we've accomplished that. We clean our brush. We always need a clean brush. And now we're going to take that clean brush, get it onto the palette. And we're going to contrast, ooh, look at that. We're going to contrast that nice dark purple with this beautiful aqua bluish green look. We're going to create a little motion, a little tension, almost like watching a film. Okay, we put that takes care of our brush for the moment. Now we start working with the rubbing alcohol. And this is where you're going to start thinking about your composition. And it's very important that you're spontaneous. That you look, approach this and just be very childlike if you can. Ooh, look at that. Look at the way that spreads. Every drop does a certain different look to it. It's almost like when you splash a rock into a pond. So that creates your, your first ideas for the piece. Then we want to create the, as I mentioned before, a lighter tone so that you start getting contrast and you start making composition. So let's start with this nice bright reddish pink acrylic ink. Oh, and one thing you always want to do with the acrylic ink is you want to shake it a bit so that it creates some nice even flow to it. And then you start basically just applying the paint 
into those spots that you made, creating more color and more ideas. And sometimes the little dropper doesn't quite do what you want it to do. So it's always fun things to do on, uh, on your part would be just to pour it. So we're going to do that. We're just going to pour the paint, the ink. We're going to make this nice, even background. So now it needs some further contrast, and I'm going to go with this nice light blue. And again, creating more of that composition. Okay. Next, we're going to again go back to our friends, the water, which you, as you can see spreads. Look how that spreads out that paint. Don't be shy with using it. Now you don't want to try and get too much liquid on here. You get too much liquid, you get to have a very muddy painting. And just remember at any time you feel you are getting too watery, you can always use a paper towel and nicely tap it and remove some of the paint. And that allows you to use more liquid later. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with developing my composition and go back to using a bit of the rubbing alcohol. Look how it makes like almost like flowers. So now we're going to go to more contrast. Nice bright color. We're going to go with a nice bright yellow. And again, remember this is action art. So you want to really apply the paint quickly and subconsciously and be spontaneous again. That's a very important word, spontaneous. Ooh. Give it a little flip at the end. And again, you see how the paint is doing its thing. You can always help it along with the water and move it to where you want it to go. And then as you can see over in this spot, you can add a little bit of the rubbing alcohol and create a whole different dynamic right there. Look at that. You can see on the bottom of the canvas, you're getting a nice spread here. These are all things you're going to watch for as your painting develops into phase one and then after it dries into phase two. You're going to get a certain level of color combinations that you're going to like. But in this phase, you're just really, it's kind of seeing what can happen. So I'm going to go with some more red on the sides against the blue. Red against blue is always classic. Look at that. Look at how that just nice little drops of red, making a beautiful contrast with the blues and the greens. And again, you may want to use your spray bottle and get those things moving. Isn't that gorgeous? Another, another tip is you can be very careful and you can move do that very carefully and sparingly. You, you don't want to do too much of that. Okay, well, I think we're going to add a few more colors and be done for phase one. I'm going to add some darker blue, create some more tension against that red. And again, it's many times just quicker, just to pour. Just to, you got to be careful, of course, you don't want to use too much of it. Just let it pour. Watch how those colors mix. Again, go back to your rubbing alcohol. Make those beautiful marks. And 
And the hardest thing to know is when you're done. I think we're kind of done with phase one. You let this dry. Now for drying times, it depends on the temperature of the room you're in. If it's a nice warm room, it should only be 24 hours. If it's a colder room, it could take up to 48 hours. So when you come back to the piece after it's dry, it's going to look different. You're still going to have many of the same patterns that you started in your composition. It won't be quite as bright, uh, but it will have great patterns for you to work from in phase two. So we'll let this dry and we'll move on to phase two.